Bloodsucker blow up. Party pooper. The slime game. Is this political commentary? No, it's crystal clarity at the Pacific Science Center, Animal Grossology, right here on Public Exposure. I'm Stan Emmert. Crystal, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. So here we are, and uh, human grossology was a huge hit, right? It was. Grossology was a huge hit for us. Um, Sylvia Branzi, who created the Grossology franchise, is actually from this area, so she had some recognition in the area anyway. Teachers love it, kids loved it, um, so we were really excited to bring Animal Grossology back. So Animal Grossology, I mean, Human Grossology was pretty pretty out there. Yeah. But animal Grossology, I mean, this is way far beyond that, right? It is. It's a, it's a very um, intimate look at the animal kingdom. Uh, it's, it's all the gross things that animals do, but you know, at the same time, you not only learn about the gross stuff they do, but you learn how it really makes our world a better place to be, to have those gross animals here. Okay, so that's, that's my question then. In the, at the Pacific Science Center, it's primarily an educational institution. Right. It is. And uh, what are we going to learn and who learns from animal grossology? I don't think there's anybody who won't learn from animal grossology. When we had grossology here the first time, human grossology, you had adults waiting in line to do the snot shooter right with the kids. Everybody Ooh, has fun. The what? The snot shooter. Oh, the snot that's shooter. what we're talking about here. Bring that back for no, one but, two? but this time we have dung ball rally, so oh, we can okay. talk about that. But the thing about um, the science center is that we aim to inspire and this is the kind of exhibit that inspires people because it is so fun, you can't help but learn something. You can't help but walk away and want to go tell your friends, did you know that the dung beetle can roll dung 15 yards a minute? Who knew? You know? So it's the kind of, it's the kind of science that stays with you and, just and it inspires parties, people. Right, right. You'd be the trivia guy. Just want to remind everyone that you can go to the website www.pacsci.org and you can find out more information. It's May the 23rd through September the 7th, 2009, this year. Uh, but let's get to some of the exhibits. Okay. Uh, because, well, first off, when you come in, like, like, what do you see when you first come in? You walk in, and, the, and the, first, the first thing that you'll see is this room full of color, full of things that you can climb in, that you can, there's buttons to push, there's fun noises, there's characters everywhere. The Grossology series, the books themselves are colorful and they're interactive, and this exhibit really brings the books to life. When you first walk in, you meet Malcolm, who is kind of the mascot for the exhibit, and he introduces you and he welcomes you into the exhibit. And then you go through and there's a series of different exhibit stations where you get to push buttons, you smell things, you touch things, you hear things, you um, play the slime dating game, you go, you uh, slide down a fish's mouth, which is right behind you. Oh boy. So there really is something for all ages. It's so much fun, and uh, we're really excited about this. Okay, let's talk about some of the exhibits. Sure. Uh, Party Pooper. Wow, that's one that uh, interested me. Tell me about that. Party Pooper is a lot of fun. Um, you go inside, it's kind of like the Grossology Zoo, and you go inside and you learn about how uh, all different kinds of animals produce different types of who, as you will, and you learn how um, when you're out in nature then how maybe you could identify what kind of animal lives in that habitat based on the poo that you come across. Oh, and daddy, then you also look at that poo right there. Right. That must be a giant bear. Right. And, but aren't you better for knowing that? Right? <laughs> I think that I could run faster. Right, right. Um, and then you actually get to identify different piles of poo and try to connect them with the animals who left them there. Well, not to give too much away, but there was something about what a gorilla does with well, we won't go in. <laughs> You'll have to come and explore that for yourself. Okay, now, you've already kind of given us a little hint about the dung ball rally. Mm -hmm. what's, what's that? Well, dung beetles, they're also known as scarab beetles, have been around for a very long time. And dung beetles, actually, that is what they do. Imagine if that was your career. They actually um, eat and live off of other animals' well, we about dung. politicians earlier, so. Uh, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> We don't uh, tell you politicians. Uh, but, but uh, you know, they actually, there are stories of them going into ranches in Texas and devouring the cow patties, the cow pies, as you will, in a matter of like two days. These dung beetles will come in and completely digest all of the cow patties. So they actually do a really good thing. And the rancher wanted that because of the poison that's Oh, yeah. Them, right? Absolutely, yeah. And it just, it just makes it cleaner, you know, it makes the 
makes it a more enjoyable place for the rest of the cows. Oh, well, let's go to another enjoyable place, mm -hmm. the Bloodsucker Blow-Up. That was uh, exciting. I had a chance to preview that. Yeah, um, in the Bloodsucker Blow-Up, you um, get to meet three different types of bloodsuckers. I think we have a tick, a mosquito, and a leech, which are all incredibly glamorous creatures. But you actually... Oh, that exciting? A, a, a tick? A mosquito, a mosquito and, a, and leech. a leech. How much more fun could you have? Uh, but you learn things like that a tick um, can actually um, live on its host and eat for five to seven days straight. Host, like Host, me. like it could be you. I didn't want to say that, but that was where I was going. Yeah. Um, and then you learn about um, leeches actually do some good. A lot of hospitals around the world actually use leeches to um, help patients after they've had surgery reduce swelling. Really? So you learn about kind of some of the good things that they do. You also learn how to identify whether you may have them on your body or may have had them on your body and then what you can do. Mm -hmm. So if you were to have a toxin inside your body, would you say, you know, doctor, give me a leech? <laughs> I haven't gone there yet. Okay. I guess it would depend, yeah. But this is this very exciting exhibit, again, Animal Grossology at the Pacific Science Center. Again, go to the website, PACSci.org, and you're going to learn an awful lot more logistics we're going to give a little bit later in the show, but we're talking with Crystal Clarity here. Crystal, um, transfusion confusion. What is that all about? Transfusion confusion. Um, different, you know, we have red blood, yeah. humans do. Um, Different critters, insects, um, slugs, those kind of creatures have different colors blood depending on what is in their body, if they have different kinds of metals, that kind of stuff. So the, um, some bugs actually, uh, critters will have blue blood, clear blood, red blood. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of them on my windshield. Actually. Right, right. And, and, and yellow blood. And so you see yellow and some of that actually is the blood. So you get to, in transfusion, confusion, you get to try to figure out what type of blood goes with what type of animal. There's caterpillars, that kind of stuff. Okay, let's put your teacher hat on now. In, in the, the transfusion, confusion, and the different colors of blood, are we actually learning how they're that color as mm -hmm. opposed to red? Right, right. You'll learn, you'll learn what, kind of, what is the chemical makeup of the blood and why that, kind of, that type of animal would have that color blood. Oh, very good. Now something I've really been looking forward to and talking about is the slime game. Tell me about that. The slime game is fun. You, um, it's kind of like it's modeled after the dating game and you're introduced to three slimy creatures. I believe there's a slug, a snail, and a fish. And um, you get to ask different questions of each of the slugs or each of the animals. And in the process, you get to decide who is the king of slime. You get to decide who's the king of slime. Now, is you think that that is going to be as popular as the snot shooter? That's going to be tough because then you also have the Choo Choo Express, uh, well, we'll which is also that. a big hit. We'll so. be getting to that in a minute. But in the slime game, I mean, it, it's just those three. The, mm -hmm. the, what were they again? There's a type of fish, and then there's a slug, and then there is a snail. Yeah, so. and, I, and I actually went over to that exhibit. I kind of cheated just a little bit. Uh, and there it was talking to me. Yeah, and you were dancing, so you were having a good time. Well, you know, there is kind of a catch tune yes. over there within the slime game. Yeah. That is for sure. Okay, we're going to talk about, we're going to skip over the underwater adventure right okay. now. Okay. We're going to talk about one more. This is, what, scratchy, sandy, scaly, squishy? Sure. Um, so one of the things you also learn about in the exhibit has, is how different animals have different kind of skin or protective coating. Um, to protect them and for survival. So you actually can't see what you're touching, but you put your hand in little um, pockets and you feel the skin of different animals. And then you learn about why that animal might have scales or why it might have spines and how that protects that animal. Hold that thought, we're gonna talk about that in okay. just a, in a minute. Wow, I just wanna remind everyone, right here we're talking about, uh, on public exposure, we're talking about animal grossology. This is a cool, gross, very educational exhibit at the Pacific Science Center. We're talking with Crystal Clarity of the Science Center. Uh, the exhibit is open May 23rd through September the 7th. Go to the website, www.pacsci.org. You're going to learn an awful lot more information. But stay with us. You might have heard a cow in the background. Stay with us because uh, we're going to give you some logistical information here in a bit. Now, Crystal, let's go back to the squishy, scaly, sandy, all sorts of mm -hmm. things. So you actually stick your hand in? You, tick, you stick your hand in and nothing will bite you. I already oh, yeah. tested them, so you're okay. You'll have your hand when you're done. Okay. Yeah. And and you get to feel the kinds mm -hmm. of outer, what do they sure. call that thing? Ex, ex just kind of their, I, mean, I just was calling it their skin, their protective okay. coating. So you let, there's, um, I don't want to give away the types of the animals, but you do okay. feel scales and spines and that kind of stuff. All right, now, 
you previously gave us a, a bit of a, a preview of the uh, Choo Choo Express. Yes. Uh, I got a feeling that's not C H O O. No, 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 that's C H E W, Choo Choo. Uh -huh. So I see, the educational right here on public education. Right, uh, yes, we're having a lesson in language. Uh, Choo Choo Express is really fun. Um, it's, a, it's a big cow that every now and then you might hear it's mooing right now. I think it wants some attention. Um, but basically you learn how, you know, we have one stomach, cows have four stomachs. And so you learn, um, it actually gives you kind of a, an x-ray look inside the stomach of this cow. And you actually see, um, by pushing different buttons and moving levers, you actually kind of move the food through the four different stomachs of the cow. And you learn why cows actually regurgitate their food and then it's called chewing cud. Ew. So a lot of times you'll see, if you see a cow in a field and he's kind of doing that, chances are he didn't just eat that. He oh, yeah. probably ate that several hours earlier, and he's just, it's coming up for seconds. Mm, I guess we're going to have an infomercial about the uh, cow <laughs> colon cleanser coming up here pretty right. soon. Huh? <laughs> oh, we won't go there. That may be too, too much of animal grossology. Okay. Um, pellet purge. It's kind of innocuous. It, it's, it, this is a really fun one, and I know a lot of um, us when we were in school, um, I remember learning about owl pellets. So this is an even deeper look inside kind of the world of owls and owl yeah, digestive have have systems. Time Time out, a brief time out. How many of you in the audience ever learned about owl pellets? If you never learned about them, there's some really interesting stuff, so you're going to want to pay very close attention to Crystal here because she learned about it in school too. <laughs> Got it set up here for you. Perfect. So, um, anyhow, so the, the owls actually don't have teeth, and owls will actually swallow an entire animal at one time. So, for example, a small mole or a mouse or something like that. Uh -huh. And then um, their bodies digest them the way that they do, and then they have to um, expel the bones. And what happens is that owls will actually um, regurgitate owl pellets that tend to be about two inches. And in each two inch pellet, you may find up to three different animal skeletons. Really? It's fascinating, and it's really, really fun. And in the exhibit, we actually have a magnifying glass, and you actually can look at different um, types of owl pellets and try now to identify the bones. This isn't fake owl pellets. No, this these are real. Real stuff. Yeah. Absolutely real. So it's really fun. So then you get to look and see what they really look like up close and there's little skulls and other bones from the animals. And then you actually get to play a game on a computer where you try to figure out how the bones fit together, which is what scientists do. And then that helps scientists learn what kind of animals live in different regions just by examining the owl pellets that they find in an area that you know they can find out that oh well this animal actually lives in this area we didn't know that well actually was this was is a really good time to uh to kind of go back a little bit to human grossology mm -hmm. and to hear and it's the theory of learning and i think you talked before about it being fun yeah it's it's true it's 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 so we use the word inspire here because it really is about that sense of if you can take learning to the next level and you can encourage discovery and exploration and adventure, then you're engaging people in a whole new level and it's so much more than what you just are being told by a teacher or you're being read or you watch on TV. It's, it, it's just so much more well-rounded and it's really hands-on and it's really inquiry-based. We want you to ask the questions. And if you leave with more questions than you came with, then we've done a good job because then you want to go out and you want to find those answers in the real world. Mm. So at the end of this, I mean, is, is this a grade level? Uh, I mean, you talked about anybody can learn from this. Mm -hmm. So like from a kindergartner like mine mm -hmm. to, to me who's an old guy? I can Absol learn. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I see this being an exhibit where you're going to find dads and moms out there and parents or people who don't have kids saying, where can I round up some kids? You know, let's go to the Science Center and let's do this. Um, there absolutely is science in this exhibit that will support curriculum that kids are learning in their schools, but it also supports that idea of lifelong learning. Uh, well, one of my favorites is Stuperfly. <laughs> Tell me about that one. Well, and this is another thing that I think this some is the of Jeff us have. Goldblum movie, right? Right. Well, <laughs> that fly kind of looks like that fly, right? It does. Um, the thing is, you know, I think that a lot of us have heard, oh, well, when a fly lands on your food, he's throwing up on your food. You know, I actually have heard that. Yeah, I have heard that. I have heard that. I never really understood why, and you actually learn why in the exhibit. So we have this giant fly, and I think he's sitting on a gigantic, really yummy-looking cookie, but he actually is vomiting on the cookie. And he has to do that because that actually helps liquefy the food source for him and then he has like a long feeding tube that then he ingests the food that way. So that's how he does it. And instead of us who, um, you know, we use our, our, our noses and our mouths to kind of get the idea of what a food will taste like, they use their feet and their legs and that's how, that's where their tasters are. So when they kind of 
clamp down on something, they taste it with their feet, then they throw up on it, and then they use their feeding tube to eat it. Is lunch available on site? <laughs> I, will lead, I will lead you to the cafe when we're finished. <laughs> okay, let's go to another one. Uh, hairballs. Hairballs. If You've got to know about hairballs, Stan, I right? I like cats. Just kidding. No, okay. just kidding. Love cats. Well, you know, hairballs, while they're totally disgusting, are yeah, really, really a part are. of um, what cats have to do to survive. So um, basically, cats are not able to um, break down hair. And so Why they have no. Why do eat hair? <laughs> <laughs> That's a bigger question. I don't know the answer to that, but uh, I, I ask my own cat that on a regular basis. Yeah, so hairballs, it's all, it's all about a whole exhibit about hairballs. I mean, how interesting can that be? I don't know about your kid, but when my cat puts, spits up a hairball, my kids are very interested. They are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so how many different animals do you think that there are represented in, mm. in the exhibit? I would say dozens. Because even though some of them are specific, like we have the cat and we have the leech, but then you learn about in the transfusion confusion, you learn about whole kind of families of animals and kind of how they operate. And then you go into the, um, the poo zoo, I'll call it, and you learn about kind of whole families of species of animals and whole families of animals and kind of what poo they produce and stuff. So you really learn some about specific animals, but even more just about kind of the whole animal kingdom and how they work together and how they actually support us. Wow. Um, human grossology was very, very successful mm -hmm. in terms of just the number of people that yeah. came through. Are you expecting the same out of animal grossology? We're really excited. We think it's going to be a great exhibit. The one thing that's really exciting for us, too, is that it's a summer exhibit. So not only do we have the families that come, our members, but we're also excited to bring in maybe some tourists, some people who haven't really explored what Pacific Science Center is all about. We think this is a really fun educational way to spend, you know, we don't always have sun in the summer, so this is a great place to come in the summer and have a really good time. So we think it'll do well. Well, actually it is. You know, come to Seattle, come in on a cruise ship, and when you get in on a cruise ship and you want to go shopping, come here to the Animal Grossology exhibit. You're going to want to go back to that cruise ship and eat right away. Oh, just kidding. Uh, okay, we got to go to uh, one more. Sense the Sense. That's S-E-N-S-E, -S -S -E, the Sense, which is odors. And you know what we're going to do? Before we go to Sense the Sense, which is all about odors that are wonderful things, that especially some of them in the human grossology, we're going to take a short break. We're talking with Crystal Clarity of the Pacific Science Center. The exhibit is Animal Grossology. It is really something else, but actually, you're going to learn so much of this exhibit, and you're going to learn it in a fun way, just like in human grossology. Go to the website, www.pacsci.org. You're going to learn an awful lot more about logistics, too. Okay, Sense the Sense. You said this was your favorite one. <laughs> I said that with a lot of sarcasm. Oh, you did. But, okay. but it is, it, it's one of those if you dare to approach kind of exhibits because we had this with, the, with grossology the first time around. And um, you basically don't know what you're smelling until after you smell it and you get a whiff of it. And there's little bottles and you squeeze the bottles and it puts a little puff of some sort of an odor. And the odors are, I'm not going to lie to you, they're not pleasant. But they are an important part of the survival of these animals. So you learn, you, at first you have to, if you dare, take a whiff of the scent, and then you learn about what animal produced that scent and why it's important for that animal to produce that scent. Well, I, I used to go and visit my uncle's farm. I mean, and it was just, it was wonderful going into the barn because there was a, a fresh, clean scent. You knew exactly what it was and you know who had been there. Is that kind of the way this is? I wouldn't call it fresh and clean, <laughs> but that's pretty close, yeah. All right. Another one of your favorites was the tapeworm tug. Oh, the glamorous tapeworm. Yeah. Don't we all love the tapeworm? Uh, but this is an important exhibit. There's actually a video where you see a tapeworm in action. But, you know, oh tapeworms, tapeworms are a, a reality for a lot of people. And in a lot of countries, you, ha you see a higher prevalence of tapeworms um, actually in human bodies. And um, they're very dangerous because they deplete your, your, your system of nutrients and they can grow up to 60 feet long. And so in the exhibit, 60 you actually, feet 60 feet, and they can lay at 10,000 eggs in your body. So they are very dangerous. Yeah, and so the exhibit educates you a little bit about what a tapeworm is, how it gets into your system through um, infected meat, um, primarily, um, how it kind of leaches your, your body's nutrients and then you actually, um, there's a rope where you actually get to see what 60 feet of tapeworm would really be like. 
Wow, is it this pleasant? Actually, about a decade ago, we had someone from the Peace Corps mm -hmm. on, uh, on public exposure who talked about helping to remove tapeworms from a human's body. Uh, and it was very difficult and, of course, very, very damaging to that yeah. person. So this is a very important exhibit. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, there is a, a commode seat that you refuse to open. And we won't talk about that. That's up to you to open. Uh, okay, uh, Belcha Baby. Belcha Baby? Belcha Baby. Um Frogs, you learn, it's an interesting, it's, it reminds me of whack-a-mole. You know how with whack, the, 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 no. there's, a, there's, a, there's a video game or an arcade game where these moles pop up and you have to try to hit them oh, that. down. Okay, it That's kind of looks similar to like that. It's a very fun arcade style game. Um, but basically you learn about how frogs actually, male frogs, store their eggs from the female in their vocal sac. And so when they're actually storing the eggs, they're unable to make the um, lovely sounds that frogs make um, because that space is being used with the, the eggs. And then when, they're, when the eggs are ready to hatch into little frogs, they actually belch them up. So the lesson here is that if the male frog is quiet, that means he's pregnant, right? Probably, more or less. More yes. or less? Okay, so yeah. that's something that we have, have learned for sure. Now, most of the exhibits have some kind of interactivity or mm -hmm. games with them. Mm -hmm. Yes, all of them do. We want, we want people to touch, we want people to, like we talked about, smell, um, feel, listen. Really, this is just all about engagement and hands-on, really fun, fun, fun. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but over our heads is a purple octopus. This is part of the underwater adventure and we're sitting in front of the underwater mm -hmm. adventure. Tell me about that. This is a really fun one. I think kids are really going to, kids love going inside things anyway. And you go inside this little um, submarine here and there's little portals where you can look through and it looks like you're really looking into the ocean and seeing different sea creatures. You learn about the six most common types of invertebrates and you learn kind of how they live in their habitat. And then when you're ready to leave, you actually crawl up and come down this fish slide, you which know. you're going to be trying later. Oh yeah. <laughs> so what's an invertebrate? Invertebrates are animals that actually don't have a spine. Um, this would include animals like mollusks, mollusks crustaceans, um, you know, sea cucumbers, starfish, even like sponges. Those are all uh, invertebrates. Of this, this, does, this exhibit doesn't attempt to cover every single animal. No, no, it doesn't. And I, don't, I think that that would almost be too much, but it does tell you a lot about a lot of different types of kind of, I, I tell them families of animals. So you really learn a lot about just the animal kingdom in general. And I think you really leave with a greater appreciation for the kind of animals that some people, frankly, would rather kind of step on. You know, it's the, the little bugs and the slugs. And you, you really get a better understanding of why it's important that we, we have them. them. Uh, that we have them, yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's get into some logistical things. Mm -hmm. um, if I, if I, do I need to schedule a time to get here in terms of, I mean, do I have to call ahead for an appointment? Absolutely not. The only time that we would ever encourage anybody to do that is if they wanted to come in a large group. Mm -hmm. And um, we do have group sale um, discounts. So if you have at least 15 people, you call ahead of time, make a reservation, you're going to get a discount. And again, for the phone number, go to packside.org. We could give you that information. We're going to try to get it up on the screen. But what we're uh, basically going to do is give you the website because they have all of this information. Mm -hmm. But we're going to go over it, uh, some of it as well. Sure. Okay, let's say that I'm a six-year-old, and sometimes I've been accused of that. Uh, uh, how much time am I going to spend in, the, in this exhibit? Oh, you could spend, I would say you could spend a couple of hours in this exhibit. I don't think you have to, but I think you're going to find is that kids, if they're anything like my kids, they kind of run from one thing to the next and they kind of try to get the lay of the land and then they come back and they pick their favorites and then they want to keep playing them. You know, with, Doug, with uh, the snot shooter with human grossology, I saw a lot of kids that played and then they went, they would wait 20 minutes to play again. And I think what you talked about, the slime game is going to be one of those. When you leave the exhibit, you play the animal grossology game, and it's like a game show where they test what you know about the exhibit. Kids are going to love that. And then I think if they get questions wrong, they're going to say, well, I need to go get the right answer then. So they're going to go learn it, and then they're going to come back and play it again. Okay, so let's uh, talk about some more logistics mm -hmm. uh, from a, a parenting standpoint. We all want to know where we're going to park. So where, sure. we, where, where are we going to park? We're going to get a map up on the screen, but uh, tell sure. us the best places to park. Uh, there's, you know, there's lots of street parking all around Pacific Science Center, especially if, we, if you head um, toward um, First Avenue, Second Avenue. Um, it's all uh, two-hour paid parking on the street. We also have a really nice sized garage on the corner of 2nd and Denny. It's our um, Albert Claypool parking garage, and um, that's paid parking, which is really accessible for the Science Center. If it's a rainy day, we even have a covered walkway to get you from the garage to the, to the entrance. What are the hours of operation? 
Um, from May 23rd until um, we switch to our summer hours, which is June 15th, we're open weekdays until 5, 10 to 5, weekends 10 to 6, and once we hit summer hours on the 15th, it all becomes 10 to 6. Oh, okay. Now tell me about the, the group stuff again. I get a discount if I uh, come in a group? Yeah, depending on what size your group is, you can call. We have a special office that will handle making special arrangements for you, and we do offer a discount that varies based on how many people um, are in your group. Now, the tickets themselves, how, how much are they? Um, adults are $11, um, seniors are nine fifty, and then we have two price ranges for kids. Um, kids ages 3 to 5 are $6, and then we have the juniors group, which is 6 to 12, and they're $8. Now, do I also get uh, entry into the rest of the Science Center, too? Absolutely, today? yes. You, there, you know, we have a planetarium. Um, we have the Tropical Butterfly House, which oh, has hundreds. Everybody loves it. You know, we have a lot of adults who come back on a regular basis just because it's warm. It's yeah. always warm in there. It's yeah, always it's 82 degrees. There's always new um, butterflies and moths in and there. Butterflies land on your shoulder. Though. They do. It's really, really fun. And there's beautiful flowers in there this time of year. So you really do get the whole science center. We do have a film I'd yeah, like to just right quickly moment, mention. Yeah. yeah, it's called Animalopolis. Did you say that um, again, please? Animalopolis. Okay. It took a while. It was kind of a tongue twister. Animalopolis is really, really fun. It's kind of just rounding out the animal kingdom experience that you're going to get when you come to this exhibit. Um, wonderful kids movie. It's short. It's um, I think it's about a half hour, maybe a little bit longer, and it's um, 12 really short little um, fun uh, segments with different types of animals. You have dancing bears, and you have um, you know cheetahs and penguins. So there's all these different kinds of animals that do really fun things, and it's musical, and it's whimsical, and it kind of has a Dr. Seuss feel. And it's the kind of movie that I can see my six-year-old just laughing out loud. Oh, fantastic. And that's at the IMAX? That is in our IMAX theater, yes. Uh, let me see. What other logistics? Uh, we've got hours of operation we've talked about. Mm -hmm. We've talked about cost. We've talked about parking, the most important part. And the crowd's anticipation, just generally with an exhibit like this, in terms of the crowds. I would say that if I was to offer anybody any kind of advice, if they if they do have flexibility to come anytime, that you're generally weekdays are going to be a little bit less crowded. Weekdays I, are less crowded. That's going to be it. Go to the website packsci.org. We'll see you right here at the Animal Grossology Exhibit at the Pacific Science Center, and next week on Public Exposure. Take care.